You are listening to Arirang Radio's Wonders of Jeju. This is a segment where we tell you about the lives of people living right here on the island. I'm your host, AK. This is Humans of Jeju. Hello! Hi, Hi. AK. Oh my god, I got... <laughs> I'm nervous it's because here. I don't have that red hat on. Yeah, I know she was expecting me that. to come with the red hat. Right, yes. I expected you were wearing I feel a so red bad hat. Right now. That's why I'm here, like with a blue hat. <laughs> oh, I wanted to be very formal. Uh, no, mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but uh, you said like you were going to buy one, but you didn't. Yes, actually, I had some place to go to this morning, and then. And then I looked in my car and I said, where's my red hat? Mm -hmm. I forgot my red hat. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to go down to the store, buy one. (laughs) Um, But it didn't work out. They didn't have the red hat. And I said, if I don't have red hat, I'm not buying one. So here I am without a hat on. But did you expect that I'm going to work? I was going to No, actually, I wasn't at all. But then when I saw you, when I came in with the blue hat on and I said, oh, Darn it, I should have brought my hat. Right, I saved. I, I love wearing hats, actually, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't, you, you know, for great. the last... Day. Thank you so much. <laughs> but I, I wore, you know, this one, like, for the for two days, special day, because I thought you were going to wear <laughs> We'll make it hat. happen, though. We'll make it happen. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, I like the red and blue. Yes. All right. So, so who is the human? Humans of JJ today you're introducing today. So, we have a very long story. So, we'll, let's listen to today's human of JJ. All right. 제 이름은 전영웅이고요. 어, 사는 곳은 외도에서 거주하고 있습니다. 어, 병원은 지금 본계에서 개원한 지 1년 반 정도 됐고요. 음, 입도는 13년 전에 와서 이제 살고 있고요. 제주에서 음, 여러 가지 활동을 하고 있습니다. 주로 개인적인 활동인데 음, 자전거도 타고 낚시도 하고 검도도 하고 있고요. 네, 텃밭을 가꾸고 있습니다. 개인적으로는 책 읽기와 글 쓰기도 병행하고 있고요. 많은 것을 할수 있는 섬이어서 전 만족하며 살고 있습니다. Yes, so today's human of Jeju is Dr. Chun Young Woo, mm-hmm. uh, who runs a private clinic in the Bonggae area of Jeju Island. Uh, it's been 13 years since he settled on Jeju, and it has been about a year and a half since he opened the clinic in Bonggae. Uh, Before this, he was a surgeon of a general hospital in Jeju. One unique aspect of his background is that he's a doctor who writes. So he's a writer as well. Uh, On June this year, uh, his collection of essays called 바람 냄새가 벤 사람들, People with the Scent of the Wind, and the theme of 제주의 동네 의사가 들려주는 아픈 너머의 이야기, Stories Beyond Pain, as told by a local doctor on Jeju, was published. Wow, that's a long title. <laughs> yes, that was pretty long. <laughs> yeah. yes. And um, we've introduced this book actually a couple months ago on books on Jeju, mm-hmm. held on Sundays. And today we're going to introduce the interview we had uh, meeting the doctor as well as the writer, Chun young Wung in person. Uh, he lives a very active life on Jeju Island, enjoying activities such as mountain biking, fishing, uh Kondo, mm-hmm. kendo, kendo, and even tending to his vegetable garden. So he mentioned that he's very satisfied with his life on the island because there's so much to do on Jeju. Well, um, but it's been a while that I heard like kendo, kendo, because right? you, you know I used to you know, hear a lot when mm-hmm. I was younger, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a while. Have you ever tried? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's already unique to be a doctor uh, who writes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, but he also engages in other activities like mountain biking, fishing, fencing, and even uh, gardening. Mm-hmm. He really does a wide range of activities. I'm really getting more curious about today's human of Jeju. You mentioned that he loves Jeju Island because he, he can do, do many things here, right? Mm-hmm. But what led him uh, to come to Jeju in the first place. So after completing his medical training in Seoul, he mentioned that he was considering about moving to a regional area to work. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to get away from the city in the first place. And it was then when he heard that a hospital in Jeju was looking for doctors. Um, After talking it over with his wife, Mm -hmm. they decided to come to Jeju. And he said that they found so many good things about living in Jeju that it has kept them on the island until now. 
So uh, he's a doctor, but has also made his debut as a writer, mm-hmm. right? I mean, first, uh, can you tell us why he decided to come become a doctor? Yes. So he mentioned since he was young, uh, he has been interested in basic science, uh, especially in the field of biochemistry, and wanted to study in that area as well. So while pursuing studies in that field, people around him advised him that going to medical school would make it easier for him to study about basic science. Mm. So he initially uh, entered the medical school, but because of his family situation, which made it financially difficult for him to study for a long period of time, he said that he had to give up his dream of becoming a scientist, Mm -hmm. and he chose the path of becoming a doctor. So while studying medicine, uh, he found surgery to be appealing and decided to become a surgical specialist, and he has been working as a doctor ever since. Wow, he studied a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, when watching medical dramas or healing stories about a medical field, I mean, surgery is often portrayed as a challenging and, you know, demanding field. Yes, yes. I mean, what made him find a surgery appealing? Uh, So let's listen first to what he said. All right. (laughs) 관점에서 좀 역할과 매력이 있었어요. 어, 가장 그러니까 수술에 있어서 가장 기본이 되는 분야이기도 했고 사람을 대하는 거는 관계가 이제 1대1 관계에서 서로가 이제 소통을 하는 관계잖아요. 그러면 이제 상대방을 배려하거나 상대방을 좀좀더 상대방 관점에서 사람 보게 되는데 외과는 뭐 물론 다른 과가 그렇지 않다는 건 아닌데 똑같이 피곤한 상황에서도 외과는 그래도 환자를 좀더 이제 배려를 해주고 환자의 그 처지를 좀더 이해할 수 있고 뭐 그런 모습들을 많이 보여주는 과였어요 저한테는 병원이라 환경 자체 그 의사 환자 자체 관계 자체가 이제 일방적일 경우가 되게 많은데 좀 환자에 대해서 좀더 배려를 하고 환자의 처, 입장을 이해하고 환경이 저한테 좀 많이 제공이 됐었던 것 같아요 외과에서 그래서 제가 좀 많이 좋아했죠. So to talk about what he mentioned, um, according to him, all fields of medication are equally challenging Mm -hmm. uh, because there is this assumption that all fields of medicine are difficult. Uh, He doesn't particularly think that surgery is any more challenging. However, what made him find surgery appealing was the surgeon's attitude towards dealing with patients. So he mentioned that the teachers who taught him and the colleagues that he worked with uh, displayed a lot of charm in how they interacted with surgical patients. Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, in any medical field, doctor listens to the patients and show interest. But he feels that in terms of communication, surgeons place a bit more emphasis on considering the patient's situation and understanding their perspectives. Well, I mean, that sounds like he's such a, like, you know, has a warm heart. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, he's talking about how surgeons uh, have to try to understand the patient's innermost thoughts and uh, feelings through the external wounds and, or illness they have. Mm-hmm. And is that why uh, he started writing as well? Or, you know, what, what was the specific region he felt the need to write? So he mentioned that as his uh, specialist training was nearly complete, uh, he had some free time to do what he wants. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was about 17 to 18 years ago, and this was a time when blogs were just starting to become popular. So he suddenly Uh, had this thought of trying something different with his hands, which was writing. Uh, From that time on, he said he started writing consistently whenever he could. He wrote mainly as a form of Uh, Mm record-keeping, and continuously doing so, it became a habit. And that's why he's been writing ever since. Wow. I mean, yeah, he is a persistent person. Mm. Writing constantly uh, for nearly 18 years is not easy to do. And now uh, he has even published a book. And how did he become a writer book? Yes. So let's listen again to his story first. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 중구나 주제가 중구난방이고 뭐 생활 얘기도 있고 뭐 경험했던 얘기 같은 거 쓰다 보니 근데 글에 대한 정체성을 좀 살려보고 싶다는 생각이 드니까 제 정체성은 이제 의사로서의 정체성이 있잖아요. 이제 그걸 중심으로 이제 글을 쓰려고 좀 노력을 했고 또 그간 쓴 글들이 또 병원에서 있었던 일을 또쓴 것도 꽤 있었고요. 그걸 모아서 정리하고 그다음에 제가 제주 와서 이제 환자들을 만나면서 
겪었던 경험들을 토대로 이제 글을 쓰기 시작 쓰기 시작했고 그 작업을 한 3년 정도 하고 해서 그글 모으고 전에 있던 글 다시 수정해서 모으고 해서 좀아 이제 글을 좀이 정도 썼으면 책이라는 사물로 해서 좀 정리를 해봐야겠다는 생각이 들어가지고 책을 좀 고민을 했었죠. 그래서 여러 출판사에다 투구, 정리를 해서 투구도 하고 뭐 응모도 해보고 하다가 어떻게 연이 닿아가지고 이제 출판사 좀 출판사 만나서 여기서 좀 책을 낸 거. So when he first started writing, he mentioned that his topics were a mix of daily life stories and personal experiences. So his writing didn't have a clear theme. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when he felt the need to establish an identity for his writing. So for him, uh, his most prominent identity is being a doctor. Mm. So he made an effort to center his writings around that. Uh, among the writings he had done to that point, uh, there were quite a few about his experiences in the his uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. So he collected and organized those writings and even began writing based on the experiences of meeting uh, patients since coming to Jeju. Uh, after working on this for about three years, he took some time to gather and revise his writings. And then he thought about turning the collected writings uh, into a book and submitted them to various publishing companies, which eventually uh, he got in touch with a current publisher, and that's how the book came about. Wow. I mean, he's not just only uh, consistent, but also a you know, go-getter. Mm. I mean, his personality is something you know, I'd learn you know, to have myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, I really want to you know, become a, I mean, write a book. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, same so here. So in the future, really? Yeah, I would okay. enjoy that. If you are in Jeju, 88.7 in Jeju City. 88.1 in Seogipu City. 101.9 in the Daejeong area. So today we've been talking about Dr. Jeon Young Woo. Hero, yes, mm -hmm. and a doctor who also writes, and he uh, he has been writing consistently for 18 years and published a book titled "Param Nem Sega Pen Saramdul," people with the scent of the wind this year, and which contains stories of uh, patients he met in Jeju. And when looking at this book, uh, it becomes clear that he's a doctor who not only treats uh, patients but also delves into their emotions. Yes, yes. And I'm curious to know that like. What made him uh, to you know look beyond just the treatment of physical aspects while providing medical care to his pa uh, patients? So first, why don't we listen to his story first? All right. 첫 번째는 제가 그 경제적으로 좋은 환경에서 이제 성장한 케이스는 아니에요. 그래서 그러다 보니까 이제 그좀 경제적으로 좋지 못한 사람 여러 사람들을 보는 기회가 많았고요. 그게 이제 어렸을 적 기억으로 좀 남아 있고요. 두 번째는 아까 말씀드렸듯이 이제 그 트레이닝을 하면서 이제 환자를 좀볼수 있는 그런 하나의 환자를 좀더 배려하고 환자를 생각해 볼수 있는 어떤 계기들이 좀 많았던 환경이었고요. 세 번째는 책을 좀 읽다 보니까 이제 그런 간접 경험들이 쌓이면서 앞에 앉은 환자가 얘기를 할때 저렇게 표현하는 증상의 어떤 배경에는 뭐가 있을까라는 어떤 고민이 생기더라고요. 그래서 자세히는 못 물어보지만 이제 한 번씩 툭툭 던지는 말들에서 이제 환자들이 왜 아픈가 라는 것들이 나오는 거고 이 환자가 예를 들어서 맞고 왔을 때이 사람은 왜 맞았는가에 대한 어떤 약간 좀 간접 경험을 토대로 하는 이제 추측이나 그런 걸 통해서 이제 환자들 환자를 좀 다시 볼수 있게 되고 그러면서 음 환자가 얘기하는 증상 너머의 저 어떤 배경들 그런 것들을 좀 짐작할 수 있게 되더라고요. So to kind of introduce uh, himself, he mentioned the first reason for his behavior dates back to his childhood. He grew up in an economically uh, disadvantaged environment, uh, which exposed him to various people facing economic difficulties from a young age. Mm. The second reason, uh, which is also the same reason we talked about earlier for choosing surgery during his medical training, is related to the environment he was in during his training as a surgical specialist. Mm -hmm. So he received training in an environment that provided many opportunities to consider and emphasize uh, with patients as a surgical specialist. Mm -hmm. And lastly, he mentioned his consistent reading of books as another reason. Uh, through reading, he gained inter indirect 
experience that motivated him to look beyond the physical aspects of patients' lives. Mm -hmm. uh, while he couldn't directly ask patients why they had certain wounds or illnesses, he started to make educated guesses about why they were in pain based on casual remarks uh, they made. And this led him to re-examine his patients and speculate about the background beyond their symptoms as well. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it seems like there was a background that contributed to his work. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, her, her insight didn't develop overnight, but rather uh, it was shaped by his like, upbringing mm -hmm. and his career as a doctor, consistent reading and various factors. Now he must be uh, have been like, you know, countless encounters with patients and each encounters uh, must have been special in its own way. And did he share any memorable patient story from his experience? So he told a story about a patient that he also featured at the end of his book. Uh, it was about a grandfather on Jeju who used to enjoy drinking mm -hmm. uh, even while he was taking his diabetes medication. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, the <laughs> grandfather didn't trust the prescriptions that he was receiving kind of like my grandfather. Yes, like um, my grandfather too. But, but later on, gradually, he began following the doctor's advice. And right. by chance one day, through an examination, uh, the doctor discovered that the grandfather had colorectal uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. So he started receiving treatment at a larger hospital, but didn't fully understand the processes there. So he returned to the doctor, and the doctor explained the post-surgery and cancer treatment process in detail mm -hmm. for the grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, so after hearing the detailed explanation, uh, the grandfather felt comfortable and began to completely put his trust on the doctor. Uh, he said, although the large hospitals probably explained things thoroughly as well, the extended period of interaction that he had with the grandfather and the trust building with him was likely what made the difference. Mm. So from then on, the grandfather continued to visit the doctor for treatment with trust and confidence. Uh, however, one day the grandfather stopped coming. Uh, the doctor said he was left wondering whether the grandfather was disappointed with him for some reason or if he had lost the strength to come. Uh, so this was all happening when the doctor was working in Sogipo Hospital yeah. and also when he was in the process of opening his own clinic. So he actually lost contact with the grandfather. So even now he mentioned that he remains curious about what happened to him. Well, wow, you know, that must be really painful. I mean, mm. not hearing, you know, not knowing like what, what happens, you know, next uh, to this grandfather. Right, right. I mean, I didn't realize that doctors would be so curious or concerned uh, when a patient stops coming for treatment. And I used to think that uh, they uh, might just pass by and having to deal with the large number of patients. Right. And he did mention that there would be one or two patients that every doctor is curious about. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes these patients simply don't express their reasons and they just disappear with that word. Yeah. So it does make uh, doctors curious about their patients. I mean, being a doctor seems like a profession, you know, that not only just treats disease, but also deals with these urgent cases where recovery may not be possible or, you know, where doctors can offer much, much help. And this must be emotional challenging. Yes. Yeah, so according to him, there are many diseases that doctors really can't cure. Uh, he, he mentioned that it's easy to think of it this way um, as making symptoms of an illness like a cold better, mm -hmm. but cold actually doesn't you know, it doesn't mean that it's being cured, right. the, you know, the mm -hmm. disease entirely. So he said that's the case for most illness. So there are times when he feels powerless. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, uh, cases, patients come in with their certain discomfort. And during an examination, illness like cancers oh, are no. discovered. Yes. So he mentioned this heartbreaking and frustrating when patients come to the hospital with such disease, and especially at a very advanced stage. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he can only encourage the patients to receive treatment diligently. Uh, currently, he runs a family medical clinic. So when serious illness are discovered, he advises the patients to seek treatment at a general hospital. Yeah. But he also asked them to inform him about the results after they recover so they can know about the, uh, how the patients are doing. And he said that when facing serious illness beyond human control, 
it's natural to have such emotional reactions. Is it natural? Just natural. They mm. say that's natural. I mean, on the other hand, I imagine like he has also uh, seen many uh, patients who received treatment well and recovered. In those cases, uh, he must feel a sense of fulfillment. Yes, you're right. And he mentioned there were some patients who came with unresolved issues from larger hospitals, received treatment from him, and eventually recovered through his care as mm-hmm. well. Uh, there are also patients who faithfully follow his prescriptions and treatments, leading them to normal lives once again. Uh, he said that he often expresses his gratitude when he sees such patients. All right. I mean, these are stories that highlights this um, identity, you know, identity as a doctor. Mm. I mean, now let's move on uh, talking about his daily life. Uh, you mentioned earlier that he has been living on Jeju uh, thir- for ter- 13 years, right? And is quite active yes. in various activities. Yes, he is. And should we start uh, by listening to his story first? Good. 일단 저는 좀 분주하게 보내요. 네, 시간을 좀 쪼개서 쓰는 스타일이어 가지고 그래서 병원에 매여 있는 시간 아니면 그 시간에는 뭐, 뭐라도 좀 하자는 주의여 가지고 그래서 진료 마치고 일주일에 두 번은 꼭 검도장 가서 검도하고요. 그다음에 일주일에 한 하루 이틀은 반드시 글을 쓰려고 노력하고 있고 책은 짬나는 대로 읽고 있고 그다음에 자전거는 1, 2주에 한번 이상은 타자 싶어 가지고 자전거 끌고 저기 중산간 올라가서 임도 달리고요. 어 사실은 낚시도 해요. 시즌별로 이제 숙제를 둬 가지고 어 동절기에 농어 한번 잡자. 그다음에 배 한번 타서 참돔도 한번 한번 잡자. 뭐 아니면 갈치나 한치 한번 잡으러 배 타자. 그런 일 중에 나름의 숙제를 저한테 좀 부여를 해 가지고 한 번씩은 하는 거. 그렇죠. 그래서 텃밭은 어차피 이제 주말 시간 되는 대로 이제 조금씩 조금씩 맞그 손을 대고 있거든요. 마당에다 이제 조성을 해 놨기 때문에 계속 보면서 이제 짬짬이 하는 되니까요. 좀 남들이 보면 <웃음> 좀 저렇게 사나 싶은 얘기도 듣는데 저는 좀 그런 게 습관이 돼 가지고 따뜻하게 살고 있죠. <웃음> Yes, so he mentioned that he spends his time outside of the clinic uh, quite quite actively. Uh, after finishing his medical practice for the day, he goes to the kendo uh, gym for mm-hmm. fencing practice mm-hmm. once or twice a week. Then on other one or two days of the week, he said he makes efforts to write as much as possible. Uh, he reads books whenever he can, and at least once Uh, in one or two weeks, he takes his bicycle up to the mountainous areas and goes mountain biking wow. as well. So he also enjoys fishing, mm-hmm. uh, which he likes to seasonally assign himself with what he calls homework to make fishing more enjoyable. And what he means by this is, for example, during the winter, he sets a goal to catch a certain type of fish, like the yellowtail, and he goes fishing for it. And lastly, he has a small garden in the yard, and he tends to it during his spare time, uh, especially on the weekends. People who see him living such a busy life sometimes have trouble understanding because he's always so busy. But it has become a habit for him, he mentioned, and he describes this way of life as a warm life. Oh, I like that. A mm. warm life. A I mean, definitely life. it is because he is a doctor, but he's doing what, how many, you know, things, activities he's doing, like, you know, in, the, in a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Arirang. 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 Arirang Radio. Uh, we were talking about today's Humans of Jeju and Dr. Jung young uh, a Jeju-based doctor as well as a writer. We discussed his uh, various activities and stories mm. earlier, but now I'm curious to know, um, you know, what's his future plans? Yes, so he mentioned that he finds the life he lives on Jeju Island to be incredibly enjoyable. Uh, so he has two main goals. And mm-hmm. first, he wants to continue what he's been doing and make it even more enjoyable and diverse. Second, uh, it's been about a year and a half since he opened his own clinic. So he's considering how to operate the clinic for the future. And last, uh, his biggest goal is to maintain his identity as a doctor and continue writing. I mean, it seems like he's uh, committed uh, to carrying on with uh, what he's done so far. Mm-hmm. We look forward to it. I mean, you know, send out this uh, support. Uh, lastly, I'm curious what place on Jeju Island did uh, Dr. Jeon Young-wung recommend? Yes, and let's listen to his recommendation. I like to eat 
근데 지금은 개인 사유지라 다쳤어요 예전엔 사람들 참 많이 갔었거든요 네, 너무 좋아서 그 안에 분화구에 가면 그게 나무가 분명한 이름을 잘 모르겠는데 단팔수가 단팔수라고도 하고 다른 나무라고도 얘기하는데 분화구 안에 한가운데 그 단팔수가 이렇게 쫙 있어요 사진도 있는데 거기 가면 그 분화구를 둘러싼 능선이 이렇게 딱 사람을 되게 안정적으로 편안하게 해줘요 다른 세계 와 있는 것 같아요 새들이 우는 데가 새, 거기서 공명하고 제가 정말 마음이 힘들 때 가가지고 가만히 한 잠깐 있다가 오는 데가 최우름이었어요. So unfortunately, the place he mentioned cannot be assessed by um, outsiders at the moment. Originally, the owner opened to the public, mm-hmm. but too many people started coming, so they decided to restrict the uh, area. It's called the c h e o r u m Inside the crater, there's this single tree, and when you look at the tree, the ridge surrounding the crater, uh, he said it brings a sense of inner peace and tranquility. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that atmosphere, when birds sing, he f- it feels like the world is resonating. Uh, he used to go there when he felt troubled, but now it's no longer possible to visit. So, c h e o r u m is in Songdangni village, right? Yes. I mean, did he uh, perhaps recommend another place? So, we asked him about a second place, and this is, uh, he says he often visits the Parime Orum Trail. Mm. And that's the trail that he would like to recommend for people to visit. Wow, okay. I mean, oh, that was, that was so nice, you know, yes. that uh, I, I really like that he was doctor as well as writer. Mm-hmm. I mean, thank you so much for today's Humans of Jeju. Thank I you mean, for listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to be here. <laughs> I mean, look forward to, you know, the future Humans yeah. of Jeju as well. And i see you next week. Yes, I will see you next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed the segment. If you are curious to find out more about Jeju, we encourage you to go check out our website at arirangradio.com slash wondersofjeju. Or you can check out our Facebook page at wondersofjeju, as well as our Instagram account at woj underbar arirang. We are going to take you on a journey to learn more about what's happening on this island. <laughs>